Well, not only have we received our January blog post bringing us some brand new game footage just in the nick of time, but we also got huge reveals, and I mean huge reveals, on the game from an unexpected 16-page article from Edge magazine. They appear to have gotten their hands on a little guided demo of the game, featuring further insight into some pretty big systems and even confirming one or two of our previous theories, we have a lot to discuss, so let's jump right into things in Hightail News Updates. Welcome back to Quebec Corner, my name's Connor and today we break down the January progress update from the Hightail development team, as well as a huge article from Edge that included exclusive images, some never before seen mobs, and even some confirmation on speculated systems, such as crafting recipes, elemental stones, weapon types, zone locations, race reputation, and even the dynamic weather controls. Oh yeah, I told you it was huge. This video is sponsored by Server Pro. Server Pro has everything you need to host the next big Hytale server. With custom host names and support for modding and scripting, why not start your adventure today and grab a free Minecraft server that you can swap over once Hytale is launched. The article, released this week in Edge, touched on the team's journey from a simple server company to a fully-fledged remote development team, and the various challenges that are faced when overcoming the expectations of a block game, especially one following in the footsteps of a behemoth such as Minecraft. The covers feature both Gaia and an encroaching pack of Skarrix within a hive. Opening it up, we read that the explosion of the trailer definitely changed things undeniably for the team. Going further back, they spotlight what it took to reach this milestone, how game modes began to evolve in Minecraft, and how that impacted their server. The hitting of the Eula, even a segment about how the team wrestled for a long time between making a top-down 2D shooter or a block game, something I think we may have even been teased at in the trailer. A particular highlight of mine was Noxie mentioning how Fortnite took almost half their entire player base over two to three months only for one of the higher-up Epic Games employees to mention how intrigued they were at E3 after seeing the Hytale trailer. They were of course quick to address in this first press release that the game is not trying to be Minecraft 2. The team actively made the choice to subvert expectations while still respecting their roots. As a stark comparison and a shock to the system, they mentioned that they chose to start off by spawning a player by a tree. The first thing expected, the genre trope, is to hit a tree and get wood after all. Of course, when you hit a tree in Hytale, you'll simply hurt yourself. They've been tossing ideas like this back and forth for years, finding a balance between what changes are necessary and which decisions are right. That's enough about the story though, if you want to go and read it yourself, you can. I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy a copy of the article, but for now, we're going to jump into some of the smaller details and images revealed throughout the piece. First up we have a new mob. This caravan of dromedary or camels have been officially confirmed for Zone 2. They seem to be saddled and may help on a long, harsh trip across the desert. In a description of this wonderful cover art piece, Gaia was confirmed as the goddess of creation. This confirms our theories that she created Orbis, and also hints that Varen may be the god of destruction as well. A mysterious new sand-based human faction have been revealed. While it remains to be seen if there's some uniting human force that spans across all of Orbis, we know that each pocket of civilization will need to adapt to their individual zone. We get a great close-up of the Skarrick tank and worker chasing one of these humans, who we can see has a bow and armor that almost looks indicative of materials found in Zone 2. I thought this was a really nice touch, and at first I thought he may have even been charging with them as they're fairly close, but on second glance his face seems fairly startled. A reputation system seems to have been confirmed, referred to here as Standing. The player appears to start the game with a set amount of honor for each faction and race of the world. We'll likely be able to monitor the stats like these from the get-go through a journal or log UI of some kind. According to the article, Ferens are harder to build goodwill with than Quebex. The fox-based Ferens begin with a neutral standing and require gifts of meat and even offerings to their god, presumably Gaia, to become more respected. This opens up a huge race of dynamics for playthroughs, allowing you to become better allied with tribes and races specific to your area, needs, or perhaps even desires. You see, where there's good rep, there's also some bad. So maybe you can even become allied with the likes of the Trorks and Outlanders. Back to Zone 1, we have some more information on quests within the game. Objectives such as destroying Trorks and rescuing captive Quebecs will keep us busy in the early stages of the game, while traveling vendors such as the Clops may provide treasure maps that lead to greater riches. I assume you'll begin the game with a fair standing towards the Quebecs. Considering you're playing as a human, you're basically a creation of Gaia and whatnot, it makes sense. And if not, saving a few Quebecs from Trot camps will no doubt quickly change that. And as long as you don't start attacking their children, then a special band of guards known as the Razor Leaf Rangers won't come beat you out of their area. 
While demonstrating the game to Edge, it appears the developers shown off a bunch of features. In fact, it was shown on multiple occasions that goblins would dwell in the underground areas of Zone 1, as expected, but it was also revealed that at present, upwards of 7,000 prefab variations exist in the game due to node-based family traits, where parent centerpieces can spawn with a chance of many varieties of children's segments to be attached. Heavy information was dropped about the procedural generation and zone layout of Hytale's main landmass. While maps are procedural, they will always maintain a basic structure or zone layout, as we correctly predicted in our last Hytale Theory Talk. However, what we didn't predict is that the zones are very similar to the climate of Earth. With Zone 1 placed more in the middle, the heated Zone 2 to the south towards the equator, and a colder, equally desolate icy wasteland to the north for Zone 3. Since deciding to change the spawn location for a player to be any of the first three zones, each needs to be scalable. Further demonstrating this in the article, the author mentions that delving deeper into a zone, you will find harsher conditions, harder quests, and richer rewards that obviously will be protected by bulkier baddies. This suggests that the difficulty tier of the zones works outwards from an epicenter, rather than inwards as we were beginning to surmise. We're still not too sure of all the details, whether Zone 1 gets harder the further out or deeper in you go is yet to be seen, as the entrance to the Temple of Gaia may be right in the centre or completely random. Thankfully, the article touched multiple times on the elemental circles we've seen vaguely before. This 100% confirms the theory that zones are related to elements, with Zone 1 generating ruined, overgrown earth crystal circles, while Zone 4 hosts a fiery crystal crown of ashfall and burning trees. We even get our first glimpse at Zone 3's circle of water crystals. We have confirmation of a specific quest type. Bounty quests, like in many RPGs, will require the player to track a specific enemy and destroy it. To combat these enemies, we're of course going to need to know the game's mechanics, and as luck would have it, there is mention of charged attacks, dashing, blocks, and even potential sneak attacks in this article. The stealth aspect of Hytale has somewhat been guessed at by the community, knowing Hypixel's background and their desire to get PvP right. Weapon categories were of course confirmed, one-handed swords, two-handed long swords, warhammers which provide a slow, wide-sweeping AoE attack, and axes that have a strong vertical chop. The article at some points also mentions daggers, staffs, and bows, so whether they fall into a subcategory or remain to be defined is unknown. One section of Edge revealed that we had different types of spellbook, as well as potions for alchemy, and confirmation of mana. Potion brewing stations will also be a special bench, the recipe of which can be found from a chest throughout the world. For all those Machinima fans out there, the team showed off their weather controls and their time of day weather interface. This is to ensure consistency and that there are no shooting errors when, say, filming a sky at night or a sunset. There was mention of some sort of swatch for sky colour grading, as well as PNG files for the moon and various assets, patterning and coloration for the clouds, as well as relocating certain weather climates to different areas of the world entirely. After briefly touching on the server listing drama that happened last year, Noxy then went on to conclude the interview. This article was a great piece, and while it revealed so much new information, we still haven't gone through everything, as we also got a blog post this week, so let's just jump right into that. As Christmas is a chaotic time of year for all of us, it's rightfully so that it's been a busy month for the team at Hytale. As they gear up for what could be the most important and exciting year in the life of the game, they're beginning to determine and set in stone the right path for the team. The team showed off some ice effects which honestly I found incredible. The kaleidoscope style texture and weird warping and colours honestly makes the ice seem more realistic than in any other block game I've seen so far. Not to mention the transition textures that go from snow to deep ice to lighter, more dangerously cracking ice. It'll be intriguing to see if any pressure or weight is needed to break this ice, as that would be a useful mechanic for many parkour systems. We were of course introduced to the complex and intricate ambient sounds that are layered throughout the game in Hytale. I think that these clips speak for themselves, so I'm going to let them play in a moment, but if you're any fan of the Atmos mod in Minecraft, you'll know exactly what type of immersion we're dealing with here. The first thing I wanted to point out is just how cool it sounds to be submerged underwater. All sounds are buffered, and you truly feel like you're in a different world. Water isn't going to be the only liquid that you're apparently going to set foot in in the world of Hytale, although it probably is the only one you should be setting foot in, as different viscosities or thickness of liquid actually will affect how deeply the audio is distorted.
Falling in Minecraft has never really felt the realest that it could be. However, with these added sound effects and the whooshing, you feel like you're actually picking up momentum as you plummet towards the ground. An excellent first look inside the Skarrick nest shows us that Skarrick eggs can be basically everywhere and make the weirdest and probably most disgusting noise in all of Hytale so far. We got a look at a weird wizard's tower and how audio transitions from various zones. These zones are not like the elemental zones, these are more like invisible barriers that sort of define the room that you're standing in and what type of audio rules can be there. Of course you'll probably find that all of these can be tweaked when Hytale releases. We potentially saw Hytale's version of the Creeper. This scary fire golem clangs its fists out of nowhere, a loud clash erupting through the lava caves. The name of this creature is yet to be seen, but it's safe to say that you're going to need some water magic or some sort of projectile to defeat it. We got a nice new look at farming, as well as a time lapse of all the different crops that they've added so far growing in the game. They ensure us that they want to keep adding to this and building on the system to make it far more complex than previous sandbox titles. To add to this, we also saw that animals can excrete or defecate or, or poop. I was, I was trying to find a better word for that. Anyway, not only does this confirm the existence of flies, but it also tells us that fertilizer is going to be something that needs to be developed and used in the game to ensure that your farm crops grow productively. Last but not least, I wanted to touch on a set of images that I don't think many people have seen. Apparently these were from the article, but I didn't see them, so it may be a regional variation of some kind. In one of them, we see some Zone 1 crystals, the Earth Crystals. However, they seem to be somewhat lifeless, and it's nighttime, so this could lead me to believe that it's either a lighting trick, or the crystals may be dead or absorbed of their energy. We got a closer look of a human from Zone 2 wandering in a spider cave, as well as a set of Skarrick mounds with locusts flying about. We get more confirmation that the animation while holding blocks in Hytale is going to be with two hands. Kinda looks cute, if you ask me. And last but not least, we got another look at a Slothian village with curly vines on trees and, oh yeah, maybe a cave rex about to eat a Slothian. Someone help that dude, seriously. We also got a look deeper into the caves of Zone 4 with carnivorous plants and interesting new biomes that we haven't seen being shown off. That's definitely everything so far. I know there's a lot and probably more that we need to go over and cover in the coming weeks. I'll make sure to get all those new videos to you as soon as possible. Don't forget that my new show will be starting very soon. As always, thank you for watching Quebec Corner, stay safe and keep free.